So thank you so much for having me here. Um, we're going to talk today about phishing the phishing resistance, or basically phishing for primary refresh tokens and Windows Hello Keys in uh, Microsoft Entra. Um, so a little bit about me for those who, uh, who don't know me. Uh, I'm Dirk Jan. I came in here from, uh, from the Netherlands, uh, where I have basically my, uh, my own company in uh, cybersecurity. So I started that um, like two years ago. Um, I do a bit of a mix of research, um, consultancy, training, um, basically trying to, uh, to always find something new and to uh, find something interesting to, to research and to work on. Um, usually that is these days in uh, Azure AD or in Entra as it's uh, called these days. Uh, I started always with the on-prem Active Directory and then I slowly moved towards uh, more towards the cloud uh, where I think there's still a lot of to research whereas in on-prem AD there's already a lot of people focusing on that so maybe slightly less uh, interesting. So if you're looking for a topic to research uh, I do highly recommend you focus on the cloud stuff because Everybody is using it. Uh, no one really knows how it works, so it's uh, it's an interesting uh, interesting topic. Um, most of the time, when I do my research, I start by writing tools. So I try to implement the protocols myself, uh, tinker a little bit with the protocols. So that's also why I um, published quite a few uh, quite a few tools. Um, started again with Active Directory, and these days mostly focusing on the Road Tools framework that we'll also use during uh, during this talk. Um, if you're interested in more of my work, I have a blog, I have a Twitter account or a X account if you if you want, where you can uh, can follow me if you're if you're interested in that. Um, so what are we going to talk about today? So today we're going to talk about uh, tokens, uh, especially uh, primary refresh tokens in Microsoft Entra. So again, uh, Microsoft likes to rename everything every once a year. So uh, Microsoft Entra or Entra ID is the new name of uh, Azure AD. Uh, so I'm going to call it Entra, but it's still the same product that it was uh, that it was before. Um, and we're going to first start by talking a little bit about the different token types that we have, because it is a lot. Um, some of it is compliant with the OAuth standards. Uh, most of it is not, especially if we talk about primary refresh tokens, which is really a Microsoft-specific implementation. Um, and this talk also involves a lot of like interconnected tokens, uh, upgrades with tokens. So um, let's talk about the tokens first. Then we're going to talk about Windows Hello, or essentially how Windows Hello works, how it's uh, provisioned, and how it actually is used to, uh, to authenticate to, uh, to Entra. Um, and then we're going to look at the more interesting stuff, which is all the um, edge cases and corner cases of how this is actually provisioned, uh, what kind of weird uh, protocols come into play with that, and also how we can abuse that. So we're going to talk about credential phishing, we're going to talk about device code phishing, um, and how we can use that to actually fish users and uh, provision our own uh, backdoor keys and do single sign-on, uh, etc. I'm um, going to wrap up with some detections and mitigations for those that are on the on the blue side, uh, so you can also, also try to uh, uh, to prevent against these uh, these attacks a little bit better. Um, so first, a bit of terminology. So a lot of the protocols and authentication is uh, OAuth 2. And in OAuth, we have a few terms that we'll see coming back quite frequently. Um, and here I want to especially focus on like the client and the resource. Because whenever we ask for tokens, whenever we sign into like a website or a, a desktop app, uh, then our user account is going to log in using a certain client, so for example using Teams, and Teams needs to have some uh, tokens, which are bearer tokens, to talk to the resource server. Um, and the platform responsible for that is the Microsoft Identity Platform, which is basically Microsoft's um, OAuth implementation, um, heavily connected to, uh, to Entra ID, uh, but the platform itself is, is called the Identity Platform, or in OAuth terms, the Authorization Server. Um, and of course, which client and which resource we use, it depends a lot for what kind of tokens we get, what kind of permissions these tokens might have. Um, so we'll do some switching between clients, between resources in this talk as well. So just to give a little overview of all the tokens that we have. Um, in Entra, we uh, first of all have access tokens or bearer tokens. And those are essentially the, the tokens that you actually send whenever a app talks to a API. So if I log in in Teams, then uh, it's going to use these access tokens to actually talk to the backends, and it proves that I'm allowed to access that uh, specific API. So access tokens are kind of the final tokens that are used to actually communicate with APIs. 
Um, but to request such an access token, we often use a refresh token because applications, they of course don't want to ask the user to sign in again whenever that access token expires. So applications have commonly refresh tokens that they can use to get new access tokens. And at the time that the refresh token is used, it also does all the security checks again to make sure that we are still actually allowed to have such a token. Um, so these are basically standard OAuth and every uh, platform that uh, uses these protocols has them. Um, but then we also have primary refresh tokens. And primary refresh tokens are a Microsoft specific thing. Um, essentially they use this for single sign-on, uh, primarily on Windows, uh, which is also what our focus is going to be on. Uh, but any other platform that Entra supports basically also uses these, uh, uses these tokens. So implementations differ a little bit between each platform. Uh, we're again going to focus on the Windows one, but you also have these on macOS, um, on Android, uh, etc. Um, now we're also going to talk about Windows Hello for Business or Windows Hello for Business keys. And these are essentially uh, authentication methods. So if you have a Windows Hello for Business key, you can use that to authenticate with your device. And then we can use a primary refresh token to actually go further from there. So it's essentially a authentication method. Um, so how are these tokens commonly used? So let's pick the example of me signing into uh, Teams. And Teams in the OAuth terms is a client and I'm a user, I'm signing into Teams. Um, and this is going to be on basically an unmanaged device. So a device that's not joined or registered in Entra, just a device that basically stands alone. Um, so I'm signing into Teams, and Teams is obviously not going to validate my credentials by itself because it's running on my computer, but it's going to talk to Entra ID, and Entra is going to validate my credentials, maybe ask me for multi-factor, and uh, if all succeeds, Teams is going to receive some tokens. So Teams is going to receive an access token, Teams is going to uh, get a refresh token, uh, and the next time that Teams wants to sign me in, it doesn't need to ask me anymore for my passwords, but it can essentially use this refresh token to authenticate uh, non-interactively on my behalf. Um, so the access tokens that Teams has, uh, Teams uses to talk to the Teams backend service, for example, um, because the chats in Teams, they're obviously not stored uh, in the Teams clients, but they're actually uh, on the on the servers, so Teams needs to talk to the servers. Um, of course, Teams is also used for a lot more than just Teams messages, because Teams also can access your calendar, it can access SharePoint, and for that it basically needs different access tokens, because each access token uh, is tied to a specific resource or to a specific API, uh, so we couldn't use like a token for exchange to talk to SharePoint, for example. And Teams can also use its refresh token to request all these access tokens and switch between different resources. So we sign into Teams, Teams gets the tokens, and Teams can access APIs on our behalf. Um, on a managed Windows host, the flow is slightly differently. And with managed, I mean that the host is like um, a company uh, owned and uh, joined or registered in a Entra tenant. Um, and then the device is managed by the company's policies, but it also means that Windows is then going to use single sign-on to actually sign us into apps. So the sign-in is no longer happening when I sign into Teams, but it's already happening when I sign into my device. So either I can use my uh, password or I can use some uh, passwordless method like a FIDO key. Um, and these credentials are then passed to LSAS, which is the security process on, uh, on Windows that's responsible for handling all the uh, authentication. Um, and LSAS is going to talk to Entra, and LSAS is going to request this primary refresh token. So this primary refresh token is a single sign-on token, um, and once I'm signed into such a session, it can use this primary refresh token to sign into uh, any application and any website. Um, so let's go back to Teams. Teams, in this case, wants to uh, sign me in, uh, but I already signed into the operating system, so Teams doesn't need to ask me for my credentials anymore. Uh, it can just use single sign-on. Now, Teams doesn't do that by itself. Uh, Teams uses something called a token broker for this. Uh, so on Windows, this is the Web Account Manager, or the WAM. Um, and the token broker is allowed to talk to LSS, um, and Teams can talk to the token broker. So Teams will ask the token broker for, uh, for tokens, essentially. Um, and if the token broker has these tokens, it will automatically pass them to Teams. Um, if the token broker doesn't have any tokens yet, it's going to ask LSS to uh, basically perform quite some cryptography because a lot of these things are uh, based around like signatures and uh, encryption and that kind of stuff. 
So the token broker doesn't handle that itself, but it essentially asks Elsass to basically uh, use the PRT, so to create like a, a signature on a, on a certain token. Um, and then uh, with the information that the token broker gets from Elsass, the token broker is actually using this primary refresh token to talk to Entra. Entra then gives the tokens to the token broker, and token broker passes them to Teams. So in this case, Teams also doesn't need to manage any uh, refresh tokens anymore. Uh, in fact, Teams doesn't have any uh, credentials, only the access tokens, um, because those are sufficient for Teams to do their job. And whenever Teams needs new tokens, they can just talk to the token broker, and the token broker will take care of it. It will do a single sign-on. So Teams can still use these access tokens to talk to all of the resources, um, but we don't need to uh, to have credentials that are managed by teams. So everything is basically in the same uh, in the same place, and it's really single sign-on. So primary first tokens um, they are used for single sign-on, and that means that we can use them from any uh, application for any website. Um, and the interesting thing about primary refresh tokens is that they are also the link between a user and a device that they are on. So quite a few advanced controls in Entra, they rely on a device identity, for example, on the uh, compliancy state of the device or uh, whether a device is hybrid joint or not. Um, and that is always done via these primary refresh tokens. So when a primary refresh token uh, is issued, it contains basically which device it was issued to. And then whenever we use that token, Entra can see, okay, this is this user. Um, and also this user is on this device. Now, um, primary refresh tokens, they uh, are secured pretty well on the recent Windows versions. So primary refresh tokens always need uh, a session key to be used. And the session keys are protected by a trusted platform module. Uh, if you have one, of course, in your device. Um, and that means that uh, even from the operating system level, we cannot actually steal these uh, session keys because they're uh, protected by the TPM. All right, so we have these different kind of tokens. And um, in this case, the primary refresh token is like the, the top of the pyramid. It's the most powerful token. Um, we only need uh, one of them because we can use the primary refresh token. Uh, to request basically regular refresh tokens for any app that we want. And with these refresh tokens, we can also request uh, access tokens uh, on behalf of a certain client, and then we can get these access tokens for resources. So on Windows, we sign in, we get a PRT, and apps then get a refresh token, or apps get access tokens via the broker. And also means that if this uh, is working correctly, then we always go downwards in the pyramid. Because if I could use like an access token, which is quite restricted, to somehow upgrade to a primary refresh token, that would violate quite a few uh, security boundaries. Because these access tokens, they um, are limited, and there's limited validation going on. And if I can then suddenly exchange that for a most powerful token, like a refresh token or primary refresh token, uh, we would have an issue. So the idea is that we always go down in the pyramid, and from these broader scoped and very well protected tokens to these less protected tokens um, that are also uh, no longer tied to like hardware protection. All right, so Windows Hello also plays a part in this uh, because if you are using a passwordless authentication, uh, which is of course better than uh, username password authentication, um, then your device will have essentially some keys that it uses to uh, authenticate. Um, so the idea behind Windows Hello is that instead of having your own password that you need to enter every time uh, you enroll a device, and the device then gets uh, cryptographic keys, um, and the device uses these cryptographic keys to log in in your account. So, uh, for example, on my laptop, it's Entra Joins. Uh, I can sign in with my fingerprint or with a PIN code, and then it kind of uses these uh, cryptographic keys to authenticate to, uh, to Entra. And then instead of remembering my passwords, uh, which can easily uh, be forgotten, or I choose a weak one because I don't want to type a difficult password each time, um, I only need to remember this PIN code. And even if the PIN code is not that strong, it only works on my specific device. Um, Windows Hello for Business exists in different variants. Uh, it exists in uh, like on-prem Active Directory. It exists in Entra. We also have hybrid variants. Um, but we are going to focus on the Entra variant. Now, Windows Hello is also uh, basically advertised as a phishing-resistant authentication. Uh, because the thing with passwords, and even with some multi-factor authentications, is that it's pretty trivial to fish for them. I mean, I can set up a fake website and ask people to enter their password, or try to 
uh, call them and convince them to give me their passwords. Um, so that's kind of an issue, and we see a lot of credential phishing attacks in which like passwords or session tokens or cookies are stolen. Um, so Microsoft is focusing more on these phishing resistant methods. Now, they advertise that as phishing resistant, but what they mean with that usually is credential phishing resistant, because there are other ways of phishing that uh, this is not gonna protect you against. So for the phishing resistant methods, uh, we have things like FIDO keys or pass keys. Uh, they use a protocol in which the URL is part of the cryptographic calculations. So if you're on a fake website, even though it might look like the real one to us, um, the, the, the FIDO is not gonna be uh, fooled by that and it's just gonna say like, hey, I'm on a fake login uh, page and Enter is then not gonna accept the token. Um, Windows Hello also counts as a uh, phishing resistant method because Windows Hello is always uh, basically done by the by the system. Uh, it uses primary refresh tokens and I cannot as a user choose to like sign in with Windows Hello to arbitrary websites. Um, and even if it's, I could do that, it still uses the same FIDO protocol sometimes, so then it would also be uh, resistant against this phishing. Um, however, this is purely focusing on like fake uh, login pages that ask you for your credentials. Um, but there are other methods that are not resistant against this. So we can still do device code phishing, um, which happens on the legitimate login page. We'll see that uh, later. Um, OAuth consent phishing is also not blocked by this because we just use the legitimate OAuth measures to request for uh, consent to certain data. Um, of course, downgrading to a non-phishing resistant method is, is also not um, really uh, a bypass in this case because if there's no policy that you need to use a phishing resistant method and you have multiple methods, then uh, as an attacker you can just say like, hey, this method is not supported and we need to use a weaker one. Um, also, malware phishing, where you get code execution on someone's device, uh, is obviously not going to be blocked by uh, using a phishing resistant authentication method. So the focus is really on uh, credential phishing. Now, Windows Hello for Business, uh, it comes to different flavors. And in this case, we are going to focus on the Entra native implementation. Uh, why? Because this one is essentially always enabled. For all the other flavors, uh, the admins need to run some specific setup. Um, but for Entra, the funny thing is, even if you're not using Windows Hello, um, it is technically still there. So you have controls as an admin whether your devices are gonna provision Windows Hello keys, uh, but it's purely a client-side control, and I'm not aware of even a way to uh, block this. Even if you don't use it, um, people might still choose to do it if they have like a custom uh, enrollment process. Um, so Windows Hello provisioning goes through a, a certain flow, and uh, it basically starts with having a combination of a user and a device. Because Windows Hello keys, they're always tied to the combination of a user and a device. Um, because one of the requirements of the provisioning protocol is that there is a device involved. Um, the mechanism it uses for this is the primary refresh token. Because this is the actual authentication token that combines a user and a device. And then this uh, primary refresh token is used to provision a Windows Low for Business key. So it's basically enrolling a uh, RSA key. Um, and then with that Windows Low for Business key, whenever we sign in, we can get a primary refresh token that is actually backed by uh, Windows Low for Business. So how does this flow look? Uh, basically, whenever an admin enables Windows Low for Business, then uh, you log into your device and you suddenly see the screen. Hey, we're now going to use Windows Hello to actually authenticate your account. So you hit OK, and you're greeted with this uh, multi-factor authentication prompt. Now the reason for that is because we are enrolling basically a passwordless authentication method, uh, we need to prove that we are actually in possession of the existing MFA method. So it's always asking us for like fresh MFA authentication, even if we might already have performed MFA uh, previously. Um, so we need to do multi-factor authentication, and after that it is going to ask us to set up a PIN or register our fingerprints or whatever unlock method we choose, um, and then we can use this to sign into the device. Now, what is technically involved in here? So we have a lot of different um, elements in this. So we need a device identity for first, uh, that we get by having a device certificate and a private key that lives on the device. Uh, the primary refresh token that we need to use, which ties the user to a specific device. Um, and in most cases, this is all uh, the key material is going to be stored in a trusted platform module to uh, basically protect it from uh, rogue elements on the, on the device. 
Um, the provisioning flow is using tokens to actually um, provision the keys. And the special thing during this flow is that it's going to uh, ask for a, a fresh multi-factor authentication. And it does this via this uh, authentication method value uh, NGC MFA. So essentially NGC MFA stands for Next Generation Credentials, uh, which is the Microsoft uh, internal term for these uh, passwordless authentication methods. Um, and if we see this being used in a token request, it means that instead of using maybe a cached MFA claim from the existing session, it wants to have a fresh multi-factor authentication prompt. So if we decode tokens that were issued during this flow, we will also see that as a authentication method. Now, if we um, want to provision such a Windows Hello for Business key, we need a specific token that meets a, a requirement. So, uh, first of all, we need to have a token that originated from a already known device. So it should be a token that's from a PRT, uh, which means that there is a device ID claim in the in the token. Um, it also needs to have that NGC MFA claim, uh, which means that we did multi-factor authentication between the uh, in the last 10 or 15 minutes. Um, and the token audience or the resource that we need a token for is the enterprise registration for Windows.net. Now, the key provisioning process is actually surprisingly simple. It's just a API request uh, post with the token, um, and the only thing that it posts is basically the RSA public key of the, um, of the private key that is in the device. So it doesn't need to prove that this key is actually hardware protected. It doesn't prove how this key is unlocked. It's just like, here's my public key, and now that is an authentication method. So it's relatively simple. Um, in the response, we see the identifier of the key that was provisioned. Uh, we also see the user for which the key was provisioned. And we see this um, key RCTX uh, parameter that we need in some hybrid flows, uh, but we don't need it for uh, Entra only Windows Hello for Business Authenticate. So we're just going to ignore this in this case. And with this request, we basically provisioned a authentication method on the account. Now, um, we can also request a primary refresh token with that. So if Windows or any other system asks for a primary refresh token. Um, it uses a special ground type, and that ground type is the JSON Web Token Bearer, which basically means that the actual request that the device is doing is sent as a signed uh, JSON Web Token. So with this, we're actually proving that it is a real device that is doing this. So in the header, we'll also see the certificate uh, from our device. So it's just indicating to Entra which device is sending the request. Um, and in the payload, we will see a, a nonce. So a lot of requests are actually protected by such a nonce, um, which means that we are proving that we are doing this like cryptographic signature calculation live, and we're not just like replaying some old value, uh, because these nonces are only valid for like five minutes. So we first need to request the nonce, and then we can use that nonce during the cryptographic calculation. Um, we see a username, and we see this field called assertion. So the assertion here is actually uh, another JSON Web Token. So we have a JSON Web Token inside a JSON Web Token. Um, and if we decode this one, then we actually find the, um, the, the authentication assertion, which is signed with the private uh, key of the Windows Hello for Business Authentication method. So previously, we sent the public key to Entra, and now we're using the private key to uh, essentially sign this material. Um, and in the payload, we see the uh, audience, which is the tenant ID we're authenticating to. Uh, we see the timestamp where it's valid. Um, and we also see a nonce. Uh, the nonce is actually new. It used to be not required. So um, I'm leaving it to you to figure out what was the issue when they didn't need the nonce. Um, but it's a story for another time. Now, if we send this request, we're authenticating as uh, the user with his uh, keys. And we get this primary refresh token. So this is our primary refresh token. Uh, primary refresh tokens always need a session key. Um, and in this case, the session key arrives in a encrypted format and only our TPM can actually decrypt this. So we don't get access to the session key even if we can see the traffic. All right, so that was a, well, not so quick uh, intro to uh, all this Windows Hello for Business uh, stuff. Um, and now here's where it gets interesting. Because I talked about that we need to have a, a combination of a user and a device to follow this whole uh, chain, essentially. Um, but what happens if there's no device yet? Because when I join a new company or when I start as an employee on my first day, I do not probably already have a device. So there has to be a way to 
register this device. Um, and this is also evident during the Windows setup. So if I have a brand new uh, laptop or I have a brand new virtual machine, uh, Windows is going to ask me to sign in, and then it's going to go through this device uh, registration flow. Now, as I was testing this, I was, of course, resetting my machine quite a few times. And at some point, I noticed, like, hey, I'm only authenticating here once. So I'm only doing a login one time. Um, and then it's actually going to follow the whole flow. So it's going to join my device to Entra. Um, it's going to go to the Intune enrollment process if that's enabled. Uh, and at the end, it asked me to set up a Windows Hello for Business key. Um, that's a bit strange because there are various prerequisites to go through that that we don't have at this first point. Because when we authenticate the first time, we only have a authentication method. Um, and after that, it's using that to uh, join the device with which it needs tokens. So that's all fine. Um, but if we want to set up a Windows Hello for Business Key, then we actually need a primary refresh token. And those tokens, uh, we shouldn't be able to get with like a normal access token or a normal refresh token. So clearly something uh, strange is going on here. So Windows is only going to ask you to sign in once while you, uh, while you authenticate. So it's going so from a state where we don't have any device, then it's going to ask for tokens. It's going to use its refresh token to get a device identity. It's then actually going to use that refresh token to ask for a primary refresh token. And in the end, it's also going to set up a Windows Hello for Business Key. So clearly something wrong is going here because we are not going down the pyramid from these powerful tokens to these less powerful tokens. Um, but we're actually going up the pyramid. So I dug a bit more into why this is possible. And it turns out that there is a, a specific client, uh, which is the Microsoft Authentication Broker that Microsoft uses during the setup. And if you get access tokens and refresh tokens for this client, these refresh tokens can be upgraded to primary refresh tokens. So where normally refresh tokens are always bound to a specific app, with this app we can actually upgrade them to primary refresh tokens, and then of course we can sign into any other app as well. So just to demonstrate this, um, here I'm using the RoadTX framework to actually ask for these tokens. Um, I'm first doing that with only username and password, which doesn't work because I need multi-factor authentication. Um, and then after I do it with the interactive window, so I can actually enter my multi-factor authentication. Um, I get some tokens here, and then I use the primary refresh, uh, the normal refresh token to actually upgrade it to a primary refresh token. So you see here I run the PRT command, uh, and I'll demo all of this later, so I don't need to uh, follow everything yet, uh, but I'm inputting a refresh token, and I'm receiving a primary refresh token, so we're essentially upgrading it. So just to go through this one more time, um, when we install a new Windows machine, we first uh, authenticate, we obtain a refresh token, then we join the device. We need an access token for the device registration service for that, and uh, we'll perform the join. Um, then we get a primary refresh token by using the normal refresh token to do the upgrade. And at the end, we're actually using this to provision a Windows Low for Business Key and even get a PRT now with this Windows Low for Business Key. So, we start with the refresh token, then we get a device, then we get a primary refresh token, and then we get a Windows Low for Business Key. And of course, Windows Low for Business Keys, they are like full authentication uh, credentials. They even count as phishing resistant multi factor authentication. Uh, so, this is a very strong authentication method that we now provisioned on this account. And even if the user's password is now reset, so the authentication method we used here in step one is essentially changed. Uh, we still have this Windows Hello for Business key, which is an additional method, and that still works. All right, so how can we actually uh, abuse this? Now, we can actually fish for this. So if we follow the same uh, authentication flow as we uh, did, as Windows basically does during the device registration process, then we can also get the same tokens as Windows does. Um, and we can do that via two ways. So first I'm going to cover credential phishing, then I'm going to cover uh, device code phishing. Um, so we can set up a fake website. Uh, it looks a lot like the real website, of course, but if you look very carefully at the URL, uh, it's called Microsoft Online with a zero instead of a, an O. Um, I don't actually own that domain. I'm just running it on localhost because I don't want to set up something and then have people searching for my site. Uh, so it's just running locally as a proof of concept. Um, but of course, you can set this up on the on the internet. 
Um, and if people enter the credentials there, then uh, Evil Jinx, which I'm running in the background, is going to capture those and it's going to uh, follow the authentication flow and in the end is going to receive uh, tokens. So how do you actually do this? Uh, first of all, of course, we need to convince the user to go to our um, to our fake page. Uh, there's lots of ways for that, uh, but it will rely, of course, on setting up the infrastructure, doing some social engineering. Um, that's not part of this uh, this demonstration. It's purely about the, the technical bits. Um, and then we can get a refresh token for the broker clients. Uh, so there's actually two ways that we can do that. So we can use the OAuth authorization code flow uh, with the client ID of this broker. Um, or we can just do like the out of the box uh, profile, uh, get some uh, persistent cookies and then use those cookies to get the right tokens. And after we have the cookies or the tokens, uh, then we can register a device, we can request a primary refresh token, um, and optionally we can also add the persistent via the Windows Low for Business key. But they're signing in basically to one specific site or one specific app, and we upgrade that into a full single sign-on token, um, and also like phishing resistant MFA method. All right, so let's do a uh, demo, see if this uh, is works, otherwise I also have like a backup video. So, duplicate screen. I'm going to do everything on Windows this time. So, I have a uh, there's a Microsoft 365. Uh, this is, of course, the bad time to figure out the syntax. There we go. There's get URL. Uh, zero, so it gives me the, the phishing URL. Um, so I'm doing this on uh, on localhost in a incognito window. So this would be the same thing as like the, the victim would normally see. Um, and we see that we go to the login page on the fake website. I'm going to enter the credentials. So username, passwords, and let me just grab the MFA token as well because we will need MFA, especially if we want to uh, provision a key. Uh, so there are sometimes ways that you can also ignore the MFAs and they would only need username and password authentication. Uh, but in this case, we actually want MFA because then the um, then we can also use it to provision a Windows Low for Business key. So in this case, we see a white page. Um, of course, in the real case, you can uh, redirect that. Um, but we see that we actually capture here the passwords, um, we capture the MFA methods, and we also capture the authorization code. So that's part of the OAuth flow. Um, I could move forward with this code. I could move forward with some cookies, uh, but I'm going to use the code. I'm going to use the code with RoadTX. So I'm using the code auth module with a client ID of the broker uh, with the right resource for that um, and with the right reply URL that we used. So this should get us some tokens. Yep, we have tokens. Um, I'm going to refresh that token to the token for the device registration service. So to register a device, we need to get the correct token. Then I can re register a device, so device uh, register with the name area 41. So now we register it's a completely real device, of course, except it's just living in this directory with this certificate. And then we request a primary refresh token, and I'm going to tell it to use the refresh token from the file. Uh, I'm going to use the certificate and the private key of the device. Oh, sorry. Key. And that should give us the primary refresh token. So the reason that it works is because we requested the original refresh token with this client ID. With any other client ID, this would throw an error message, but with this client ID, it works. Um, and now I can also go through the Windows Low for Business flow because we did MFA in the last 10 minutes. So I can use the PRT and rich command with the NGC MFA DRS of, which is a lot, but it's documented, so you can just read documentation or copy paste it from, uh, from the blog or the slides. Um, and now it's going to actually pop up a browser window. Um, it's going to immediately close again because we already did MFA. And now we get a token. And if I describe this token, uh, we see that we now have a token with this NGC MFA claim because we recently did MFA. 
Um, and with this, we can actually uh, register our Windows Hello key. So we do row TX, uh, win hello with key area 41, hello dot key. All right, so we have a key. And so basically we started by phishing the username password, uh, which is quite, quite temporary. Um, and now we actually have a backdoor key which acts as an additional authentication method for this account. So as the last step, I can use this to get a primary refresh token. So I request one with the hello key area 41 dot hello dot key. And I can use the certificate of the device, the key of the device, and I supply the username. New victim. And we have a new PRT. And just to show you that it works, I'm going to use the browser PRT off, uh, which basically pops a browser window. It will automatically do all the single sign on with this PRT, um, and it's going to not work. Is my internet broken? Let's see. Let's try this again. If your internet works, it works. That's slightly better. So we see that we're authenticated as this user new victim. Um, and this is just a single sign-on that's now in my browser. So I can switch to any app, um, any website, anything that's Entra connected. Um, and it will actually pass these phishing resistant authentication policies because I used a phishing resistant authentication method to get this primary refresh token and to authenticate to, uh, to my account. All right, that's one. Now, the downside about this is that, of course, credential phishing is not a new thing, and there's a lot of indicators that this might be a malicious site. Microsoft is monitoring for these kind of things. Um, but there are alternative phishing methods, and one of these is device code phishing. And this uses the OAuth2 device code flow. Um, and basically, this is intended to uh, authenticate on like devices that are, uh, that don't offer the capabilities for like, um, MFA or like an interactive browser window. So basically, you start the device code flow. And the idea is that in, in your browser, you enter the uh, device code and then you, um, authenticate on the, like the dump device or like some server that you SSH into. Um, but of course, nothing stops us from trying to convince someone else to use our device code. And if they use that on their device, then uh, we are actually going to be the one that receives the uh, tokens. So we can actually also do this with the broker client, because the broker client also supports this. And normally, you get only tokens for one specific app. But if you use the broker client, we can then upgrade that and sign into any application, essentially. So. It's quite similar. Um, it's just that we receive the initial tokens a little bit differently. So we can then fish for a PRT. Um, with the tokens that we get, we can register a device or we can use an existing one. Um, the refresh token allows us to upgrade to a primary refresh token, which allows us to do single sign-on. Um, and as long as they also did multi-factor authentication during the, um, during the uh, phishing, then we can also use this to uh, provision a Windows Low for business key. So let's very quickly do that, because we are running a little bit low on time. Um, mm -mm -mm. Device code. So I'm using the device code flow with the get tokens command. And it's asking us to go to the device login page. So let's, oh, sorry, I'm not squaring. All right, um, <laughs> that's better. So we go to the device login page and we initiate this flow with the client uh, again of the broker. So let's go with this window. Yes. So we go to the device login. And now my we enter the code. So this is the real login page this time. So we don't need to have any fake infrastructure or fake server. And we can, again, authenticate with our victim account. Um, if it's already authenticated, the account, then uh, we can also use uh, single sign-on. 
So again, it codes. So in the end, we will receive the same uh, tokens. Uh, there are a few warnings, but if we do this, then we now see that we receive the same um, the same refresh token essentially. So I can just use the uh, PRT command again with the uh, refresh token from the file. Um, I can use this token to register a new device, but I already had a device, so I don't need to do that. And now we have a primary refresh token that we can uh, again use to sign into any other app. And because we also did MFA, we can also do the upgrade if we want. All right, so two different methods. Um, Device code flow has the advantage that it doesn't require any like fake login pages, any infrastructure. It's all the real Microsoft uh, page. Um, there are a few different detection and mitigation strategies for this uh, because there are different flows, so there are different controls that you have for this. Um, mitigations is different a little bit per uh, method. So um, if you want to mitigate credential phishing in general, uh, you can actually require one of these phishing resistant methods. Um, it's not going to cover the enrollment case of a new device, so that's still kind of a kind of a corner case, but it will block like less advanced uh, device code. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, less advanced credential phishing. Um, the best control is actually to require a compliant device or a hybrid joint device uh, because those are uh, quite a bit harder to obtain. Um, because even if we can follow this flow and set up a new device, if we cannot get that device compliant and you need a compliant device to access um, like Outlook or Teams, um, then we cannot uh, use any uh, do anything with it. Um, this, of course, also requires restrictions in Intune to actually prevent people from enrolling any device, so you will need some control over your uh, corporate devices. Now, for device code phishing, Microsoft actually added a new mitigation a while back. Um, it was partially as response to this blog. I don't know if they were already working on that before. Um, but you can now actually block device code flows. Uh, so you can, for example, restrict that to only your internal network because there are a few apps that need this. Uh, usually it's going to be developers and not uh, end users. Um, but you can have control over the device code flow. So the device code flow is a little bit harder to detect because everything happens on the real uh, login page, uh, but we can now block this flow from being used uh, completely. So that's quite good, uh, it's quite uh, quite powerful, and Microsoft also recommends this now that you, uh, that you block this. Um, for the detection, if you have log analytics, if you have Sentinel, uh, then there's some KQL here where you can basically um, match the broker app ID with the device code authentication flow, which shouldn't happen that often. Normally when people register a legit device, it will actually use the authorization code flow. Uh, so this will not detect the credential phishing. Uh, for credential phishing, there luckily are a few more uh, things that we can do. For example, identity protection uh, might be able to, uh, to see that there's a login happening from like a suspicious IP address or some anomalies there. Um, does require a premium license, so it's not uh, magic. Um, and you could also try to monitor for newly registered devices that enroll Windows Hello for business keys, because it might happen, but especially if this is a non-Windows device or a personal device, then uh, it shouldn't be, uh, it might or it might be not uh, legit, essentially. Um, so maybe this went a little bit quick, but I do have a blog on this topic that you can read through if you if you want. Um, I also added some resources on uh, device code phishing. Um, there's actually also a script to automate the entire flow. So from the generating device code to registering device, uh, provisioning the Windows Low for business key. Um, that's also uh, available. It was written by uh, Kai from SpectraOps. Um, and there's actually also some research by Compass Security to do this flow, but then for uh, FIDO keys. So in this case, we went with Windows Hello keys, uh, but you can actually also do the same trick with uh, with FIDO keys, as they found out. So you use device code phishing, and then you actually enroll a FIDO key, which is also, again, a phishing-resistant uh, MFA method. All right, so on the clock, um, just a shout out to Road Tools. Uh, everything aired, all the tools are open source. Uh, I do have some Road Tools stickers if you uh, if you want. Um, and I'd be happy to take any uh, any questions as well uh, afterwards.